As she said, I'm from a ranching family, so I can't help it, okay? <laughs> In 2005, the United Nations approached my organization, Florida Earth Foundation, to come up with an idea worth sharing. The UN owns a university in Delft, Holland. The university is called the UNESCO uh, IHE, also known as the Institute for Water Education. Uh, UNESCO IHE is a very unique uh, organization and university. As I said, it's located in Delft, Holland. It's the largest water university in the world. It offers MSc and PhD degrees in water disciplines, so it's a grad school, uh, basically, and it is designed for developing countries, so we from the United States or from Europe normally don't go there. Uh, and uh, it also has about two to 5,000 applicants per year, 200 are chosen, it's all done by testing. And so these are some of the brightest students uh, in the world. It has about 14,500 graduates from over 120 countries since it began in 1955. Over 80% of the students that go there are contracted to go back to their country of origin so that they help solve the water problems in their country of, uh, of origin. And so in 2005, uh, we formed the UNESCO IHE Florida Earth Partnership and uh, we take an entire division of that university, their Department of Hydroinformatics. Now, hydroinformatics sounds like a really um, uh, uh, high-tech word. It's their modelers. They take and model water systems, or they model hydro, uh, uh, hydraulic systems, uh, riverine systems, ocean systems, anything to do with water. And we bring that entire department here in the summer, right here to Palm Beach County, and uh, we set up a course for them. We, in, in the process of doing this program, we've done 160 students from over 43 countries uh, since uh, 2005 when it was begun. We have a lot of partners that put this uh, program together. And this is kind of our flagship program. And we have partners from the federal government all the way from the Department of State because we're dealing with uh, student visas from these, uh, uh, with these students coming from all uh, parts of, of the world, universities uh, and uh, government institutions and also private sector folks like Watts Water which, uh, which sponsors some of, some of these students and individuals uh, are partners in the program. And so here is a film that was a PBS special that ran this year that featured our 2010 class. One of our flagship programs is the Florida Earth UNESCO IHE uh, program and partnership, which uh, emanates out of Delft Holland. The UN owns a university in Delft in which they award master's and PhD degrees to students from developing countries in all kinds of water science. And so we bring those students over to the United States for a two-week course that we have developed for them. And a very integral part of that course is the Kissimmee River, because the Kissimmee River has been modeled greatly by South Florida Water Management District, the Army Corps, and all the agencies that take a look at what needs to happen with the Kissimmee River. And so we expose these students to uh, that type of hydroinformatics, as they call it, which is simply just modeling of water systems. It's a good example of how, uh, indeed, we should work with nature, not against it. Because here we see the excellent case studies how various tools, various approaches, which are top of the notch, uh, can be used to improve uh, ecological state and environmental services for various systems that are in uh, Florida. So right now we have 12 students, four of them are from Ethiopia, two from Egypt, two from Colombia, two from China, one from Vietnam, and one from Mongolia. We come here to see that how models are being used in decision making preserving the nature, bringing back ecology, or in flood management, or hydropower, like that. Before coming here, they were having lessons, uh, lectures from some people from Florida. They are giving lectures on the wider perspective of Everglades Restoration Project, and part of that is also on Kissimmee River Restoration Project. 
it's incredible to see how quick has an ecosystem restored because normally these projects uh, involve a lot of money. So if you can show results in a very quick, in a, a very small amount of time, it's, it shows that they are really valuable. One important thing is that uh, you should try to work with nature, not against her. And that is something that we water uh, engineers know. So we've taken these students and we've turned them into what we call our water ambassadors. And water ambassadors is just a way to support the Florida program as we bring these students over from all parts of the world. And companies, organizations, and individuals can actually adopt a water ambassador for a period of one year and you get their bio, their picture, and connections uh, uh, with them. Uh, we have taken them to all parts of Florida in, and uh, as they study these uh, models that, they, that have been developed, we take them to Everglades National Park. We even uh, introduce them to, um, to um, politicians in, oh, I'm sorry, how did, how did, how did that get in there? I'm sorry. We need to move on. Uh, and we, we, do, uh, we do introduce them to movers and shakers, especially in, in the local area and uh, people that um, have an influence uh, in, in the water sector here in, uh, in the local area in Florida. And so as we introduce people uh, from all parts of the world, they get a sense of what life is like in America. And we've had, out of the 160 students we've had, we've had five that have ever been to America before. And so it's a real treat for these students when they come over here to, to see this. Let's meet a couple of them. Benar Juma is from Kenya. He's a very interesting uh, young man, and he's a, a water am ambassador for uh, uh, Greg and Rebecca Weiss, and Greg's here today. And, and so Bernard is a really interesting guy because of the fact that he comes from a family that is very poor, and, uh, and I do wanted to say that they have an opportunity when they graduate from UNESCO IG with their master's or their PhD, when they go back to their home countries, they climb the ladder incredibly fast. We have one person um, uh, that uh, was in our very first class from Ghana, and he now is uh, one of the deputy ministers in the, uh, in the government in Ghana. Uh, three heads of state have graduated from UNESCO IG over the years. So uh, it, it's quite an institution. Uh, and Bernard is, is going to go back to Kenya, and he's going to make a real difference in his life. Um, uh, Sandy Soda from um, the uh, island nation of Dutch Indonesia. And this was taken right after Sandy was eaten by an alligator and disappeared. No, I'm kidding. He didn't. <laughs> but uh, Sandy is, uh, 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 was our photographer for this year's class. And you never could see his face very often because he always had a camera in front of it. But Bernard had something to say. He said, I intend to see my contribution to go beyond Kenyan institutions and countries in the greater Horn of Africa. I strongly believe that when I get my priority goal right, on these matters, then I aspire to see a generation that enjoys food and clean water security, which are the primary essential needs for humanity across the globe. These with many more water-related challenges lie squarely within our individual mandates to tackle them. It is my urge to all of us to be awakened on environmental protection for the benefit of our today and tomorrow's generations. This is from a young man that says something like this. That means he cares. He cares what's going to happen to his country, but he cares what's going to happen to the world. And he has a real sense of how he can affect change for the good. Beheshta Tolo is a really fascinating young lady. She comes from Afghanistan. And the reason that I chose Beheshta to uh, share a little bit about her to, uh, with you is that Beheshta comes from a society that puts a damper on women and advancement as they, they and, and you know about what is happening in countries w uh, that have a strong Muslim influence on, on, on women and how they're treated. The Heshta is at risk when she goes back to her home country. This is a story of real courage. This is a story of a young lady that says, I don't care about the risks. 
I want to do what I can do and help my country. Sami El Toum, he comes from Ethiopia, uh, excuse me, Sudan. And, 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 and Sami, I asked Sami one time uh, when we had him over here, I said, Sami, uh, um, isn't there in Sudan some really bad things going on? And he comes from an area that's fairly close to Darfur, and you might have remembered what happened in Darfur. And he said, well, there's famine, and there's drought, and there's disease, and there's all kinds of things that are happening right now. And I said, well, Sammy, how can it be that good? And he said, because my family's not dying right now. So you think about perspective and how that we can see from different parts of the world, we really got it pretty good, don't we? And so uh, they go back, they finish their studies, they graduate, and this is a big deal for them, a really big deal for them. One of the things that we do with our students, and we do this with every class, is we take them to Kennedy Space Center. And I'm sure that many of you have been to Kennedy Space Center. It is one of the most inspiring places in the world. And at Kennedy Space Center, there is this uh, building called Saturn V building. And if you've ever, how many of you have ever been to Kennedy Space Center? Yeah, and, and, and in the Saturn V building, there's this theater that you go into that shows a lunar lander life-size that descends onto a fake moon surface. And that dis display and interactive uh, presentation is narrated by Alan Shepard. And Alan Shepard said that as he got off his lunar lander and set foot on the moon when he was in uh, his Apollo mission, the first thing he does, he comes down the ladder and he turns around and the first thing that hits him in the face is an earth rise. The earth was just coming up over the, over the horizon of the moon. And Alan Shepard said that he stood there and wept in his helmet openly. And you could hear him doing it as he was on TV and the world listened to him. And he said the reason he wept is because of the fact that from the moon he could not see the borders that divide us. These students take that back with them. And these students, they, they literally wept. And, and, they, and maybe nobody else in the room in the theater weeps, but these students, it just hits them in their heart. And so they go back to their home countries after they experience that. About four months ago, do you remember what was happening in Egypt? Egypt is a mess. But in Egypt, there are people getting killed. One of our students from 2010 emailed me. And she said, during this turmoil, of which she saw family members die, she said in this email, I look okay on the outside, but my heart is filled with tears. If only my country could see an earth rise. So you want to change the world? Change it one person at a time. Thank you.